Hello everyone. Um, in this episode of the English Hour, we'll talk about getting rid of toxic people. It's a very interesting subject because it's different from, I guess, the previous episodes that we've had, but we're trying to listen to your feedback, we're trying to listen to the f- suggestions from the audience, and this was one of the topics that our audience wanted us to discuss. So, here we go. So I guess basically it's important to sort of define the problem, the framework, so that we can address it better. And I guess the main question is, or sort of the main questions are, like, who are toxic people? Uh, What are their impact on our environment and on our personality? And why do we want to avoid them? So let's first address these questions. And I think by addressing these questions, we'll be able to offer Uh, practical advice to a lot of people or at least a starting point what do you think John Mark? well that's a good approach hi guys well let's start with the definition first yeah well when when I hear the term toxic people I think of people I mean there are different kinds of toxic people so for example when I hear toxic people the first type that comes to mind my mind uh, are the people who are rude like people mm. who swear a lot people who have bad language like foul language mm. I don't like those kinds kinds yeah. of people like it's like they don't have anything else to say just swearing screaming mm. yelling at people so that's one type that comes to my mind and another type of toxic person that I think I've had encounters with it um, is people um, that suck your life energy. Mm. For example, we, I mean, you might be at a peak level or you might be having an ordinary day, but then you encounter this person and then after that encounter, you feel very drowsy. You feel like there is no, yeah, depleted. There is no life in you. So I guess that's the second kind of toxic people. And if I am to name another type, maybe it's the type of people that kind of smiles at you, but sort of digs a gray or something behind your back or Mm -hmm. tries to sort of look nice to everyone, but then uh, talks up badly or very negatively behind their back. So that might be the third kind of toxic people. So, I mean, this is basically Mm -hmm. my imagination at work right now, spontaneously. So... I'm hoping you might be able to add uh, more to the list. Actually, when I think of toxic people, the first category that comes to mind is the third that you mentioned, like people who try to undermine others, who try to undercut other people's success, maybe bring people down rather than lifting them up. We encounter such people in every situation, actually. And, you know, basically a toxic person is somebody who harms others, right? Because We have people out there who are helping others all the time, who are bringing good energy, who contribute a lot with their productivity, with their lifestyle, with them being an example to you and everybody else. So those people are non-toxic people, good people. I don't don't know what what you want to call them, but toxic... Decent people. Decent people, exactly. Decent human beings. Decent human... Yeah, when you say human beings, when you couple decent with human beings, that adds even more flavor to the expression, you know? They are human it becomes beings. elevated. Exactly. Yeah. People is more like, yeah, people. It's a more generic term. So toxic people, I mean, they're all around us and we're trying to get rid of them. So basically that's the, that's the topic. Uh, why are you trying to get rid of them? We're trying to get rid of them because we want to protect things that are valuable to us. It could be, I mean, the most toxic people can really harm you. You know, it's dangerous to be around them. Those kinds of people can harm um, your life, your relationships, your financial or business success, all kinds of things. So you want to get as far away from them as possible. Or distance yourself as much as possible. Yeah, that's definitely one thing that you want to do. And the second type that you mentioned, let's start with the third type you mentioned, because I think that's the most dangerous among the types that you mentioned. That's true. Right? That's like because people who... Because it creates some sort of chaos. It's not a one-to-one interaction. It sort of creates chaos and... Uh, affects everybody. Evil, basically, in that environment. Yeah, definitely. So, it's like 
it has a lot to do with a person's mindset as well like for example if you think about the first category that you mentioned somebody who has who uses foul language a lot that person might not necessarily be evil at heart like because some people by culture use foul language a lot and it's like a habit for, for them. lack of communicative skills that's that's one reason you know they lack communicative and they might even be you know a second type would even be very expressive and very good with relations with relationships but they still because of culture because of the environment that they grew up in they could really have very bad language and right and in anger or other uh, human situations they might just throw out words and expressions that you might not like to hear yeah and that kind of makes them toxic but their toxicity is temporary or in comparison. uh very comparably much lower yeah. than the third type definitely the third type that's like more evil that's more sinister yeah you know it that, is. you know it's like stab your back type of deal you yeah it's dangerous stuff even you versus yeah i well this kind of reminded me of a turkish proverb it goes like this so i'll translate it but you know it's never really easy to uh, translate. translate something verbatim so i'll just try to explain the meaning so uh one turkish proverb says it's better to have a wise enemy than a fool or stupid friend mm. uh, that's good this isn't exactly the the toxic people comparison but mm -hmm. i think there is some truth to it. like there is some kind of a relation so uh, you can consider that that toxic person as the stupid friend or something hmm. i'm not totally sure this it's just that this reminded me of that hmm. proverb it's a good proverb though it is it's yeah definitely helpful if you apply it to your real life situations it improves your life you know i think one way to get rid of toxic people would be first of all to observe the context that's really important because you encounter toxic people in every venue in every environment and sometimes you might not be able to effectively get rid of them for example there are a lot of toxic people there can be and there there actually are a lot of toxic people in your family environments and that's a problem yeah it's a very tricky situation yeah because in turkey we it's have like extended in, families yeah it's inter in turkish we have this great saying but i'm not sure how you you're can... going by sayings today. yeah yeah uh, well this just reminds me of several expressions so it's good well i'll first say the turkish version and then maybe try to explain it in english so it's like atsan atılmaz, atsan mm. so you cannot throw it away you cannot sell it either <laughs> yeah definitely well you know that's you gotta live with them right you gotta sure. live with the situation so you have to have a lot of management skills i guess in those situations in in situations where you can't effectively distance yourself from a toxic person you have to manage the situation as much as possible which means if they're family you're not gonna go beyond the uh, how are you or pleasantries level phase yeah yeah you want to have like a pleasant word or two with them and then keep it you know keep it there you don't want to go beyond it especially if they are the third type the sinister type oh yeah you definitely want do, do not want them near your family near your house even you know if uh, situations permit and in that case i mean the more you talk to them the more dangerous they might turn exactly. out to be because, because they the more knowledgeable they become about your life uh, that's true so i mean there are people who try to sort of exploit the knowledge that you share with them in pretty bad ways definitely so uh, if it's a family you know basically manage the situation if it's a professional setting that's also difficult then especially in, if you're in the same environment all the time definitely you know breathing the same air the same sharing the same atmosphere that makes life difficult definitely you know sure in that case you have to maybe uh, talk to a supervisor and maybe get some authoritarian help sure that's what and the doing. thing is like the ideal would be to be able to work with uh people who complement your skill set the mm -hmm. people that uh that you can relate to i mean that's the best scenario and uh try to do it as much as possible mm -hmm. but 
I know, and we all know that there are times when we have to work with people who we might not like a lot. Mm -hmm. And and it's beyond liking. I mean, you might have serious problems with some people. And in those cases, again, I guess the management skills come into play because uh, you will have to gradually or maybe suddenly uh, distance yourself. Maybe a gradual transition might work out better in the mm -hmm. long term. For example, if you don't want to be with a toxic person, then you will have to avoid the environments that that person is present in. So like uh, the social encounters, mm -hmm. the environments. For example, if you're going for lunch or dinner or something. Do not choose you, the restaurant that they go to. Yeah, or um, make sure that you go at a different time interval. So yeah. either earlier or later so that you don't cross paths with that person. Definitely. I mean, if it's serious, mm -hmm. sure. And also, you have to live by a set of rules and principles that are going to keep you away from such people. Such, for example, it, d never go into long-term business dealings with them, you know, because you, you're looking for trouble, basically, if you do that. So one way, you know, you can keep them at bay is do not get into anything that uh, makes you and them invest uh, for long-term, you know, that's... Oh, you have that's... something to say? Okay, well, I guess I'm in a very metaphorical uh, phase today or mindset because when you start talking about uh, spending time with them distancing uh, those toxic people mm -hmm. away from yourself this remind especially the in in a business setting so yeah. you don't want to uh, have a long-term business relationship with those people mm -hmm. so uh, it reminded me of another Turkish proverb mm -hmm. which <laughs> goes like this so I mean and by we, the way for our audience Hussein is not reading from a piece of paper or anything. You know? yeah, yeah, well, this is, just, this is just impromptu. So there is this saying in Turkish. I'll just say it first and try to explain it. So it goes like this. Mm -hmm. So the, the gist of this phrase is that uh, if, if you sleep with a blind person, then you will end up having eye problems, mm -hmm. sort of. So it's just like... Uh, uh, it's it's a relationship law. So we become similar to people we spend uh, time with. And there is an there is a famous saying. It I don't I don't remember who said it, or I don't have the exact words. But it goes like this: You are the average of five people that you spend the most mm, time with. Definitely. Tell and me it's, your friend, and I'll tell you who. Yeah. You are. yeah I, I mean, this you. of course reminds me other Turkish proverbs, yeah. but I'll not go into detail. But sure. Yeah. So basically. Um, one way of keeping away from toxic people is, you know, as an umbrella term, management. That's really important, trying to manage the situation. I think another approach could be, and this depends on the level of toxicity emanating yeah. from them, is stonewalling them. You know, based stonewalling a person means not reacting to their initiatives, their um, attempts to contact you, engage with you, and, you know, this is actually, as far as I know, a, a advice given to people who encounter harassment situations in public settings, for example. If somebody's, you know, whistling at you, trying to get a reaction out of you by telling things to you that you might not like to hear, or even trying to engage in physical contact in any way, then stonewall them, right? Like, do not give any reaction to them, do not engage them, uh, do not give them the attention that they so crave. If yeah. you deprive them of that kind of attention, then their attempts basically fall flat. They realize that they're not going to get a reaction out of you, so maybe they divert their attention to another person, or maybe they uh, shut up, you know, Yeah. hopefully. So stonewalling could be a really important skill, you know, in, in every setting, like, you might even have to pretend that you haven't heard them in, yeah. some, in some situations because if it is a really toxic person, if you don't want to engage them, but at the same time, if you don't want to break their heart or if you, if you don't want to have even a word with them, and you can encounter situations like that, let's be real. Like, yeah. So in such cases, I think the best to do is like do nothing, right? I haven't heard, I'm like, what's going on? I mean, the thing is, it takes a lot of patience. Yeah. I mean, patience is key. I mean, you might already know what you should do, but knowing what to do and implementing it are 
very different. So it, you need to have principles to be able to do that, you know, sure. to react positively to situations. You already have to have a prearranged set of principles and rules that you live by. That makes things really easy. And the thing is, like, while we're talking about this, I can't stop thinking about the Can fact that... Over? No, no, well, I'll stop it here. So the thing is, so, um, you know, uh, you're trying to keep toxic people away from your life. But at the same time, it feels kind of sad because... Uh, maybe those toxic people can turn out to be good people over the long term. I mean, they might be able to um, get their act together, mm. maybe. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you have to uh, cut contact with another human being. You have to distance them mm -hmm. so that you can uh, have peace of mind. You know, that's It's an... sad. Like, it's sad because it's another human being. Maybe they've gone through something bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, there are different cases. There are different scenarios. But then, I mean, uh, you, I mean, you might have to really distance yourself because that might be the only option. Maybe some people are curable. Some people aren't. Mm -hmm. So it's another uh, take on the issue. Yeah. It's a, a different take. It's a great take. You know, it's a great interpretation because it really opens up our horizons in terms of uh, what kind of human conditions, what kind of human situations we find ourselves in. And if you think about it, like a toxic person could really be somebody who really needs just a bit of convincing, just a bit of a different approach so that they can express themselves more positively in more positive terms or ways. But at the yeah. same time, that toxic person might also draw a lesson from you not misbehaving against them, not aggressing against them, not taking a more aggressive or more uh, attacking stance, but at the same time keeping your distance. Because people do get impacted by situations like this, like that stonewalling type of situation. If you find yourself in a situation like that, where a person who is talkative, who is who has great interactions with other people around you does not respond to your particular uh, calls or requests then you realize okay there's something wrong going on here like yeah. this person is so good with everybody else is such on good such terms you know such good terms on everybody else but towards me there's like some something going on there's a problem yeah and that might actually uh, allow you to look back in yourself that might allow you to do some soul searching and or reflection you know, some reflection right some introspection and then you come to may, you may come to the conclusion that okay well i see so many virtues in this person and they're not talking to me maybe there's something wrong you know well you know what if you are such a reflective plus Type. toxic person then i guess your toxicity will will not last long. Definitely. Maybe, you know, life has embittered you because of what you've experienced. Maybe you weren't patient enough in the face of some challenges, some major challenges. Just, to, just like you said, you know, people, there are people out there going through every kinds of difficulties yeah. and problems. So maybe that's a temporary phase. Maybe that, that person will, you know, leave all toxicity behind and then become a productive person. Yeah, well, this this reminds me of an interesting conversation that I've had with some of my viewers. So, um, when I post new new lectures, new uh, tutorials, videos, or conversations on mm -hmm. my YouTube channel, yeah. I get countless positive uh, comments, like really encouraging comments, people telling me how, how much they have benefited from the course, the material, or how they learned a new approach, a new perspective, and really showing their appreciation. And honestly, a lot of effort goes into the production of those courses because I have to set aside time, plan it, record it, uh, the equipment, the the program, software, uploading, everything. It the takes scheduling. Everything. Yeah, it takes an enormous amount of time and effort and as well as investment. So Definitely. it's a very time. yeah, it's a very costly uh, process. And uh, I mean, I've I've realized that, I mean, I was looking at the numbers, I've recorded over 300 courses, lectures, uh, in about one and a half years. And that's that's a remarkable number. I mean, I'm Definitely. sure there are people who can beat that, but 
It's pretty remarkable. It's as also quality too. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. But then you're not putting out a vlog. <laughs> that's true. Like each piece is generally well thought out. So, but there are times I get very mean comments. Like they're very mean, very abusive comments from some people. I'm like, oh my god. In the past. Uh, I used to answer their comments like I'd say like what's wrong with you or I guess I guess you did not understand what I'm saying because for example someone uh, makes a comment but based on the lecture but uh, I've addressed all of their objections in the lecture the video and I guess when I look at their comment I think well these people probably haven't seen the video and commenting on it without really understanding what I'm saying like I'm saying the same thing. Maybe that person is saying the same thing. I don't understand. So there are a lot of mean people, uh, and I used to answer them. But I thought I realized that it was an endless well, like mm -hmm. it's a downward spiral because mm -hmm. they take a lot of your time and energy. I think they suck, they suck out your energy, and haters. I stopped. Yeah, haters. Like haters are, are gonna hate. Haters right? gonna hate. Yeah. yeah, haters are gonna hate. So I was like, okay. And I mean, at first I found it very difficult, you know, because uh, I am a, I guess, a very talkative person. I like like talking to people, having conversations, trying to understand their point. Because mm -hmm. I respect those people as human beings. I might not know them; I, they might be mean, but still, I think they're human beings. So maybe I can help them. Yeah, and you are also a very feel-good person, like running on good energy. That's yeah, one of your principles. So, so uh, I was trying to help a lot of these naysayers, so to speak. But then I realized I was having conversations, uh, dialogues with them that didn't really end well. Like, for example, there was this one guy who said, well, you're always posting positive comments from your students about your books and stuff. Here is my comment. And he was going on some negative things like, OK, I didn't like that part of the book. I didn't like this part of the book. Uh, if you're honest, share it. Mm -hmm. and I was like, OK, then I shared it. <laughs> then people started uh, writing back to that guy, like oh, yeah. because like I mean they defending yeah, yeah they they have seen the comment and they're like okay this is kind of stupid like what what you've said what this person said about the books and stuff and then this person was telling me oh you should immediately uh, delete that uh, mm. that comment or that something that you shared I mean this guy begged me to share it because he thought I was always sharing the positive stuff. Yeah, he thought he was challenging you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, here it is. I'm sharing the screenshot of your comment. Feel free, you can share it with anyone. And here on my channel, on my social media profile. And then this guy got very angry because I shared despite uh, the fact that he wanted it. Yeah, because that allowed the community to take it apart, basically. Yeah, you know? and I, that was that was a very interesting experience. Mm. That's very interesting. Like yeah. I wouldn't do it, but I was like, because like this guy kept pestering me like a couple times. I was like, okay, okay, I'm done. Let's share it. Yeah. Have it your way. And you know what? That reminds me of something about toxicity and toxic. The word toxic. Toxic basically means waste. That's the thing about being toxic. You are no good. Like you're not doing anything useful. That's the part that really uh, gives us the, sh the sense that we need to cut such people out of our lives because it's waste, basically. What do you do with waste of any kind? You cut it out. Yeah, you put it in the garbage. Yeah, you take it away, you throw it away. So that's the same thing. You know, if you have toxic behavior, it should be going to the same garbage bin that toxic substances should go to. I mean, that was a very interesting experience. Like this yeah. guy, as I said, kept pestering me with negative comments, this one single person. And eventually I wanted to make him happy. But then he did not feel happy either. That was interesting. And then, so after that encounter, I, I thought, okay, there is no way to please these people. Like literally uh, even if you uh, uh, like agree to their demands like do things they want they wouldn't feel okay because I think they've got something missing I don't know so 
I stopped paying attention to naysayers, mm -hmm. and I think it has been uh, very positive because I feel much better. Because you know, uh, I've also learned some lessons about toxic people and toxicity, mm -hmm. especially if you're online, if you're putting yourself in front of like uh, hundreds of thousands of people, you're gonna encounter a lot of criticism, a lot of toxic people, mm -hmm. and a lot of people tend to say nasty things that they wouldn't say in in real life mm -hmm. or they would be afraid to say in real life you know yeah because, because online anonymity gives yeah, them the all the weapons they need to sure they people. they can simply hide behind uh, a nickname or something yeah, there should be some kind of a pleasure involved in this like yeah I they guess. should be deriving some kind of visceral pleasure out of attacking other people i mean i guess they have little means of driving pleasure out of life I mean, you have to be such a loser to have that as a means of driving pleasure. So, right. so that's one thing. And uh, one of the things I've learned, maybe it's also a good skill or a good strategy to uh, deal with toxic people. So there was this, uh, uh, this approach of quantifying your feelings. Hmm. For example, uh, one approach said, well, look at the comments and the response. So just count them and compare the positive and the negative comments to see if they make sense mm. or what is their ratio and in my case i realized okay like 95 uh percent of the cases i'm with my audience like we're having a very positive dialogue and then mm. okay it's okay to have a couple naysayers or haters that's okay i've come to accept it yeah so the the quantification part sort of putting things in context because you yeah. know we are in the habit of exaggerating things i mean That's right. we might be in a great mood and then just one single negative experience and then you might feel down right mm -hmm. i mean it happens Definitely. to me Definitely. i'm maybe not every day but it happens to me you're having a great day and then some stupid small thing happens and you feel oh bad yeah does exactly. it happen to you i mean it happens to me from time to time you know actually i i remember having read about this in a psychology book i don't know the exact terminology involved in this but it is basically focusing too much on a particular aspect of a person's personality and then completely discrediting that person's character altogether i think a lot of people end up doing this like a relationship, for example, starts on a, on good terms, and then you start to look at the the other person's positive traits and virtues a lot, and maybe at one point you think that they're a great person. Like maybe you kind of glorify them in a sense, and then you know there is like a plateau phase where everything is human, you know, and you're still on positive terms. But there is also like a point where the relationship kind of takes a downward uh, trajectory. And at one point, you might uh, find yourself in the fallacy. This, is, this was actually, I think, uh, named a fallacy. Yeah, it might this be a kind cognitive of a fallacy. Cognitive fallacy. It's like a cognitive mistake that you make. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, unaware. You know, you're unaware of the mistake, but you make it. You see something about the person and you... Um, dislike it so much so intensely that that little mistake and this little in comparison completely wipes away all of the positive things that you have been thinking about that person and that person's character and you know basically it's bad blood between you and you know the relationship kind of takes it that's very interesting yeah, just one interesting. small Definitely. small aspect of a person's personality yeah. can really change things yeah, I was th I was talking about an interesting conversation I had with with some of my viewers, listeners. So, uh, a couple of days ago, I I I published another lecture on mm. how you could improve your listening. No, how you could improve your speaking skills mm. without speaking much. Mm. That was very controversial, but it came from personal experience because uh, when I was in high school, I didn't have a lot of. Uh, uh, Opportunities. opportunities to practice my speaking skills but what i had I, what i had was i was uh, chatting with my friends online a mm. lot foreign friends and it helped me produce sentences quite quickly mm. so i was able to use grammar and vocab and form sentences pretty quickly you know instant messaging mm -hmm. messaging so and then 
I was also conscious that I had to learn the pronunciations of words because if I did not know the pronunciations, then I would not be able to listen to them and I would not be able to pronounce them when I needed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did not have the opportunity to sort of speak English a lot, but I was sort sort of taking a modular approach. Mm -hmm. Like I was readying up the bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. So, and then one day uh, we had visitors from a European Union project coming to visit our high school and that was pretty much the only or the first speaking experience I've had maybe my my classmates had we were the foreign language class and then at, after like 10 to 15 minutes I was assigned to a woman like probably Finnish I don't quite remember the nationality um, so this after, is a group of students no group of uh, uh, teachers or inspectors sort of Hmm. It's not students. It's Being like, matched with students to talk with them? Yeah, so I was like the foreign language class had eight uh, students and mm -hmm. our teacher and I guess the incoming group had like five to six people. I don't mm, quite I remember the numbers. So they were adults, probably supervisors or inspectors or something from mm. from a European Union project. That's so cool. Yeah, that's very cool. So and then I started talking to this uh, this lady like 10-15 minutes into the conversation, I was feeling very fluent. Like, mm. I could say whatever I wanted and it felt great. I was like, well, am I dreaming? What is this? Mm. Like, great experience. It was very interesting because, yeah. you know, I didn't have a speaking practice, but what I had was the That's ability good. to produce sentences. So at yeah. that point, it felt like I was simply writing sentences in my mind very quickly and then pronouncing it. Mm. So it was, a very, great. it was a very different approach. Okay, I agree. It's not a very natural way maybe or it's not the traditional way to do thing to do things but it was interesting because a couple days ago or we, weeks ago we were talking about the importance of uh, production skills like producing sentences because mm -hmm. speaking and writing are both productive skills right you have to produce something or in the case of speaking you produce it through your mouth like mm -hmm. you produce it inside your brain and then transfer it through your mouth or in the case of writing you produce sentences in your brain and then uh, uh, transfer it through a pen or pencil mm -hmm. so I had that production part I wasn't very experienced with the uh, with the the oral part the articulation yeah the articulation but since I was paying attention to the pronunciation of words it went fine mm -hmm. so i was talking about this experience and how it was possible to pull things off yeah it's very different and mm -hmm. i wanted to share it because you know it's a it's a bit of fresh air mm -hmm. in an industry where everything feels uh very you know repetitive yeah and then i had a couple of people like i have one person like telling me about you don't know this stuff have you ever heard about the philosophy of language and stuff I am from Hajjatep and so on. And I was like, I was like, I was bursting into laughter. I was like, oh, cool. You know what? I got that uh, philosophy of language class in my master's from one of the best minds in Turkey. Like, uh, and now he is the head of the philosophy department at Koch University. I was like, okay, I know that field. If It sounds very familiar. Hmm, Hajjatep, sure, fine. You're a fine guy or gal, I don't know. Hmm, do you want to race? It felt very, very weird, you know. Yeah, you know. And I was like, okay. And upon that conversation, I asked some of my audience, okay, I, I'm having like such and such things, like people who don't who don't see the horizon or who don't see other options. Like maybe you're at level one or level two, but you don't see what is above you, or you don't see uh, the the complete view you know it's like a building the higher you go the better view you get or a more complete or comprehensive view you get but if you're at the bottom like if you're in the basement or in the entrance floor you don't see much right you yeah. just see the wall in front of you and the irony is the closer you get to the building the harder it becomes to see it yeah that's true i was like i was asking the audience and i was like okay what do you guys think i should do like how should I go about this? Like, how can I teach these people? Like, how can I communicate with these people? And someone from the audience said something very meaningful. He said, Oh, Hussein Ujam, or uh, Hussein Ujam, don't care. Don't, don't care, because there will come a time, maybe at this point, that person is not 
open to that knowledge, open to that idea. Mm. But it's the beauty of YouTube because maybe years later that person will come back to this course, yeah. watch it again and will have a very different appreciation. It happens all the time, definitely. And it was a remarkable point of view. I really yeah. liked it. That's because, a wise interpretation. Yeah, because yeah. that's true. You might not be mature enough to understand what is being said in that lecture, but mm -hmm. then over time you will develop a different perspective you will learn new things and 10 years later or two years later it might feel very different definitely yeah. it it happens a lot with books right it does it, it does with uh, videos as well in this day and age because some videos are laden with information you know like there are nuggets of information inside them and then you look at them and then you maybe get a super superficial understanding of the content but if you go back maybe three to six months later yeah you understand that there's actually so much more to be had to be absorbed in this content that's true you know it happens all the time so this recent encounter that i've had in this respect also ties to my initial comments regarding the toxic people being people okay mm -hmm. that person might be toxic but there might come a time when that person again becomes a decent person yeah. or will have a change of heart or change of ideas or something well it's not unlikely mm -hmm. i mean it might not be very likely because generally if, i mean if being a toxic person is a part of your personality i'm not sure i don't know how it feels yeah, like yeah. i mean i guess i'm not a toxic person so i don't know how it feels you know this is a good point to i think mention one more thing and i think one of the best ways that we can get rid of toxic people and toxicity in our lives is to first of all avoid becoming one you know because all of us can fall into such situations can end up in such situations you know if somebody is behaving in a way that you would describe as toxic that person might actually be a very good person a very decent person in their normal lives but that situation kind of broke them you know Kind of they snapped in that situation they just couldn't control their feelings and they said something or did something that is not representative of their true character true colors so for all of us here you know in the audience myself included i think the best thing we can do to get rid of toxicity in our lives is to first of all avoid situations where we lose our temper lose our patience and do something that we will regret later on because in that case we ourselves might also be perceived by somebody as a toxic person. I guess it's possible to have a bouts of toxicity. Yeah, definitely. So that's true. So it doesn't have to be a personality trait. I mm -hmm. mean, there are times when I feel mean, nasty, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe some, I mean, maybe, one, maybe someone made More me angry. irritable. Yeah, maybe someone made me angry. Mm -hmm. I'm losing my patience. And then I might uh, become nastier towards other people right it happens because i mean no one has infinite patience definitely and everyone is irritable not, but the yeah. degree would differ definitely i mean exactly. you might have more patience i might have less patience and it is also a habit let's not forget that patience is a habit sure it's something that you can cultivate so it you know you can't take responsibility out of the equation but at the same time you're right i think a lot there are times when we, we basically our patience dips you know, yeah, it's hard to avoid that. It's hard to keep it refreshed. I mean, especially if the circumstances are challenging. Definitely. Yeah, it requires a lot of concerted effort. Yeah, there are some perfect storms sometimes that in which things come one by one and they hit you like a train wreck and then you find yourself like lying down. And if you try to get up, something else comes and stream rolls over you and it's difficult, you know? Yeah, it happens. I mean, if it didn't, it probably will. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Yeah. That was that was great. I think that was like a candid conversation about how we feel about this, and that's what I really like about these podcasts. Like, yeah. Since we don't script anything, we don't have anything written down. It's so easy to just delve deeper and deeper, as deep as we want, into the topic and bring real life examples and try to you know think on our feet. This is really fun. Yeah, it's not like we're trying to contain the conversation. The yeah. conversation guides us. Definitely. It's much better because, you know, I mean, honestly, uh, when we start 
uh, recording the episode. I don't know how long it will take or I yeah. don't know what we'll talk about, but it so happens that every time we have something to talk about and that feels very interesting yeah it definitely does sometimes you feel like you're gonna run out of ideas quickly because you think okay what's gonna come out of this like getting rid of toxic people okay keep away from them right that's it yeah you feel like that but when you get into it then you realize okay this is another human area something that we encounter all you know every day then we can talk about it yeah, and also, since I think we share personal examples, I think that makes it very relatable for a lot of other people as well. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like my personal examples in this case, I guess I can imagine a lot of people having something similar. Yeah, going through something. Yeah. Similar. So, yeah, let's wrap this up. Yeah, well, this is basically end of the end of this episode, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.